Hello dear students. Welcome to learning chemistry is easy and fun. Structure of atom lesson 6 is our topic for today. Elaborating on lesson 5 where we have done about the electromagnetic theory and the electromagnetic spectrum, we shall further be talking about the spectrum, what are its various types and what do they indicate. Spectrum, there are two types, the continuous spectrum, the discontinuous spectrum. Continuous is very clear from what you see in the rainbow. In the rainbow, you see the band of seven colors which we name by Vibgyard. The violet, indigo, blue, green, yellow, orange and red which make up the seven colors of the rainbow. How do we do, how do we explain the formation of this continuous spectrum is because of the splitting of the white light when it passes through the raindrops. This has been diagrammatically represented as saying that we have, a, have white light, pass a narrow beam of white light through a prism and we get the band of seven colors. In order to avoid making the diagram very complicated, I have only shown the violet and the red ends of the spectrum. So we have the shorter wavelength and the longer wavelength. Now, coming to discontinuous spectrum. Discontinuous means, now here this was called continuous because one color merges onto the other. In the rainbow, you are not able to make out which one is red, where the red ends and the uh, orange, be uh, orange begins and where the orange ends and the yellow begins. So they are merged into one another. Discontinuous, on the other hand, is the spectrum where there are gaps. Now why do these gaps come? This continuous spectrum has been divided into two types to make it simpler for understanding and simplicity. Absorption spectrum, emission spectrum. First, let us see what is absorption spectrum. As the name indicates, absorption spectrum means what part of the spectrum has been absorbed. So what do we have is we've got white light here. I pass it through the sample. The light after passing through the sample is the name as transmitted light. Now this transmitted light is passed through the prism to divide it into its corresponding wavelengths. After the light gets divided, we observe it on a photographic plate. When we observe it on a photographic plate, the image that we get is what we call a spectrograph. And when we also measure their frequencies or the wavelengths corresponding to them, then it is also called a spectrometer. We are measuring it. When the white light is passed through the sample, Depending upon what sample we have, some portions of the white light get absorbed by the sample and the transmitted light will be missing those wavelengths which have been absorbed. So when you see the photographic plate, you will have everything bright as you can see in this part of the photographic plate. So everything will be bright. In the other sense, the background of this photographic plate will be bright and there will be two dark lines corresponding to the sample or uh, like here I've taken two dark lines. This corresponds to the sample corresponding to the wavelength of light which has been absorbed by the sample. So here we've got the dark lines in a bright background. This is what we call as the absorption spectrum. So just absorb this and then we go on to the second one, the emission spectrum. When what lights are emitted or given out by the sample. Here what we've done is we've taken white light and passed through the sample. So some portion of that white light is absorbed. Emission spectrum. You've got the sample, we excite the sample. We get it in an excited state, how? Either by heating it strongly, for example, uh, you have sodium, sodium metal, you take the sodium paper and 
uh, put it in a Bunsen burner. So what will happen is the sodium metal which will vaporize will be emitting certain light. You can also excite the sample by passing electric discharge through the sample. So for example, I've got hydrogen gas. Now just go back to lesson one where we had talked about the discharge tube experiment by J.J. Thompson. So if you remember, we had passed, we had taken a gas at very low pressure and we had applied a high potential over here across the two ends of the plate in order to excite the gas which is there. So you can either pass electric discharge through the sample if it is a gas or we take if it is the the sample is a metal so we heat the metal filament very strongly now in each of these cases what will happen is the sample gets excited the light which is emitted from the sample is passed it is narrowed down by passing through a small slit and then incident onto the prism now what you get on the screen will be Otherwise, there are no other lines. So, there's a dark background. But frequencies corresponding to the sample that I have taken in as the sample will be incident over here. So, what we'll have over here is the sample has given me lights corresponding to these two frequencies. So, the difference in the absorption and emission is Absorption, there are dark lines in a bright background corresponding to the light which has been absorbed by the sample. Emission is there are bright lines in a dark background corresponding to the lights or the frequencies which have been emitted by the sample. Emission spectrum is further categorized as line spectrum or and band spectrum line spectrum as the name indicates the spectrum will have specific lines corresponding to the frequency of the sample that we have taken the frequency of the light emitted by the sample that we have taken now if you understand over here this is a characteristic property. So absorption or emission is a characteristic property of a specific element. So supposing I have the sample either in the form of an element or in the form of a compound. So let's suppose I have got sodium chloride solution over here and I pass the white light through it. Or here I take the sodium vapor and I analyze the lines that I am obtaining. Interestingly, do you think that the lines that I am observing in the spectrum, the wavelengths of those lines, will they be same or will they be different? Yes, they will be same. So we have like 5890 angstrom units and 5896 angstrom units. Are the frequencies, or, sorry, are the wavelengths of the lights in the absorption spectrum? In the emission spectrum also, if I have taken sodium, any form of sodium as the sample, the emission spectrum also will correspond it to the above two wavelengths. So 5890 and 5896 angstrom units. Now, there are other smaller lines as well. But these are the major lines which can be seen. In other words, what we can say is that this spectrum that we are observing, these lines that we are observing is a characteristic property of that particular element or the atoms of that particular element. Hence, this line spectrum is also called as atomic spectrum. If the sample is a molecule, now molecule means it will be made, a molecule is made up of a number of atoms. That can be two atoms, that can also be three atoms, that can be eight atoms and so on. A molecule, on the other hand, will give us bands because there are a number of atoms in that. 
that is why molecular spectrum is also called as band spectrum molecular spectrum means when i have taken the sample in a molecular form not in its elemental form so band spectrum or fluten spectrum fluten means it will be bright and then it will fade away it will it will become lighter right so we have emission spectrum of two types line and band one of the spec now that is why we call line spectrum is the fingerprint of an element in other words the frequencies of the lights obtained in the emission spectrum will correspond will be fixed for will be fixed for any element whether it is in the form of an element or it is in the form of a compound that is why we are able to identify elements even in their combined state by using the technique of spectrography here we will also mention what we call as the hydrogen spectrum what is the hydrogen spectrum hydrogen spectrum is nothing but the line spectrum of hydrogen interestingly what is observed is that if i take a sample of hydrogen gas in a discharge tube and i observe the light which is emitted by this sample from the discharge tube it is found initially the lights were observed only in the visible part of the spectrum later on as the technology and techniques became more advanced it was found that the spectrum from hydrogen was lying in three different zones so just like i have taken the example of sodium where i am getting two bright lines here what was there are there are five zones in which the lines are can be observed so you have the ultraviolet zone you have the visible zone you have the ir part of the spectrum also in which the lines from the hydrogen spectrum lie these were named differently after the scientists who did work on them so we have the lyman bama fastian bracket and the fun series starts with a p so we have these five zones are there in the hydrogen spectrum so lyman lying in the ultraviolet zone bama in the visible zone and the rest three in the infrared zone of the electromagnetic spectrum initially due to limitations of the technology that was available at that time only visible range was discovered so bama he tried to explain as to why we are getting this hydrogen spectrum and how do we calculate the frequency or the wavelength of the lines which are observed in the hydrogen spectrum so he gave his formula he said mu bar that is the wave number now what is wave number if you have missed it please go back to the previous lesson where we have discussed all this in detail new bar is given new bar or wave number is nothing but the reciprocal of the wavelength in centimeters this is equals to 109678 one upon 2 square minus one upon n square so this was called as the bama formula and your value will be in per centimeter because we are talking about wavelength in centimeter later on rebab he modified the equation in order to incorporate the explanation for all the different zones and he said that instead of 2 square we will put n1 and n2 over here now what are these n1 and n2 these n1 and n2 are nothing but whole number values 
so you have n1 is 1 2 3 4 and so on your n2 is also 2 3 4 and so on till infinity in order to explain why we are getting f lines in the five zones of the spectrum or in order to be able to calculate or correlate your observation with the theoretical values this is called as the line spectrum so now if we talk about the rutherford theory coming back to the model of the atom because you must be wondering how come we have switched on to the electromagnetic theory and the study about spectrum when we were talking about the structure of the atom now these all were developments which forced the scientists to think on whether the Rutherford's model was really valid or not because all these observations where I'm talking about an atom emitting light and it is showing specific frequencies I've got the hydrogen spectrum and hydrogen we said is the lightest element with one electron how come it is showing lines in different zones of the spectrum so and there are there are gaps there are dark spaces bright lines or as in the case of absorption there is bright background and there are dark lines over there how do we explain all this behavior with the help of the rutherford model that we have done till now so we are we are going according to the timeline discussing the structure of the atom and these are the terms which you will be using when we do the next model of the atom atom that is the Bohr's model of the atom that is why it is very very essential that you understand these terms although we had un under the Rutherford's model we had explained that this was one of the drawbacks the hydrogen spectrum but I cannot explain you the hydrogen spectrum in isolation unless you know and unless you understand what is spectrum and how do we, what is its relevance in our study. Look out for lesson 7 where we shall be dealing with other uh, phenomena which cannot be explained by the electromagnetic theory. If you have liked the video, please don't forget to subscribe and share with your friends. See you in lesson 7. Happy studying.